Why, hello, y'all. We're talking about tissues of the body, part three, muscle tissue. So muscle tissue consists of specialized cells that contract when stimulated. There are going to be three types. We've got the skeletal, which is voluntary, which means you can choose to move it. There is smooth muscle, which is involuntary, which means you don't even have to think about it. It does it on its own. It moves and does its job on its own. Then we got some cardiac muscle, which again is involuntary, which means you don't even have to think about it. It does it on its own. Now muscle function. Well, we have movement, motion, walking, running, internal body fluid transport. We got the part for the blood vessel. We got peristalsis, which means the movement of substances through your GI tract, such as your intestines or the urination. We have Posture and stabilization. It keeps your head upright, stand, sitting and standing. We have urine and excrement sphincter control. We also have thermogenesis, which is the generation of heat through muscle work to maintain your body temperature. We also have these shivering with that. And 85% of the heat generated from your body is from muscle. Now muscle characteristics. We have excitability which means it responds to action potential. So if some sort of chemical, either physical or chemical, gets up to the point that it can actually go and happen, we see something occur. We see conductivity, which it conducts electricity or electric current. We also see muscles have contractibility, which means it's able to tighten or thicken to produce work. We have extensibility, which means it can stretch without being damaged. And we have elasticity which means it can return to its original shape after extension. So we see in muscle tissue that it is composed of specialized cells that have the ability to shorten and contract in order to produce movement. We have a well-supplied blood vessel. They are long and slender and sometimes called muscle fibers. And they are usually arranged in bundles or layers with connective tissue around them. Now looking at the skeletal muscle, we have fibers that are cylindrical, multinucleated, which means it has multiple nucleuses inside of one cell. We see striation, which are going to be line segments, and it is under voluntary control, which means we can choose to move it. The functions are going to be to contract for voluntary movement, and the locations down here are going to be our skeletal muscle. Now for smooth muscle, the fibers are going to be spindle shaped, have one single nucleus in the center, and they lack striation. Now these are involuntary, which means we do not control them. They just occur on their own. And the function is to for propulsion of substances through the internal passages. Well, down here in location, we have in hollow organs such as our stomach. We'll see it as well in our colon and our intestines. And for the cardiac muscle, we have branched fibers that have one nucleus per cell. We do see striations and they are separated by something called intercalated discs. Now these intercalated discs are between cells and it helps synchronize the beating of the cells so that all of our heart or cardiac cells can beat together at the same time. Now, your heart or your cardiac muscles are involuntary. You don't have to think about it for your heart to keep beating. And it's for pumping blood through our circulatory system. Now, since cardiac is going to be talking about the heart, these muscles are going to be found in the walls of the heart. Now, muscle attachments. Tendons are strong connective tissues that we learned in the last unit, and they connect muscle to bone. Our Achilles tendon attaches the gastrocnemius muscle of our calf to our heel. And the fascia is a touch sheet-like connective tissue that covers and protects our tissues. Now looking under the microscope, we can see several different parts. The outside muscle area is called the epimesium. Inside the epimesium, we have these bundles. And these bundles are called fascicles. Each fascicle has a paramesium, which means the outside covering, paramesium. 
Inside between all these little fibers is going to be the endomesium, so between the fibers. And then each one of these nice little pink circles here is going to be a muscle cell. So we'll draw this again in class. And then we're going to draw out how a muscle contraction works in class. And then we're going to be able to look at some muscle tissues underneath the microscope. And that's going to be our muscle unit. So that's all for now. Have a good night.